What's up, YouTube? I am Dermy Wormy, and I'm coming at you with a new video, and we're going to be trying something a little bit different. Sorry, there's a bug flying around in here. Uh, I'm going to try to put this out tomorrow morning, and I'm going to start trying to put out my videos in the morning instead of so late at night. Uh, we'll see how this works. <clears throat> Hopefully, I get more traction. Uh, today, we're going to be reviewing Sandman Episode 3, Dream a Little Dream of Me. I'm going to have to play around with the thumbnail a little bit, because I did it wrong, so. For starters, I did not like the majority of this episode, let's just be real honest. It got long, it got boring, and Joanna Constantine, who we will be lovingly calling Clara from, oh, sorry, Clara from Doctor Who is just as annoying as she was in Doctor Who, <clears throat> then just, we'll, we'll just get into it all. I did not like this episode one bit. Uh, we open on a club, uh, possibly in London, didn't really tell us, and we're watching as Clara walks in. I'm not calling her Joanna or Constantina, she's Clara. Clara is walking in. Uh, Clara begins walking to a door which is shaking and there's light coming out from behind it and money and ticket stubs are being drawn in and quickly there is a little a little black girl comes running out and yells Joanna and Clara calls her Os Ostra uh, Clara takes her so the little black girl's name is Ostra weird name don't ask uh, Clara is then taken to a back room where Ostra's dad is lying in a pentagram and Ostra says something about he said it was just going to be for fun didn't and said it, what happened to their mom wasn't going to happen again uh, Ostra's dad's laying in a pentagram I guess asleep or passed out Clara stands over him tells him to wake up and then she hits him with a book that has some sort of satanic rituals I guess in it and damn bug Anyways, uh, apparently her dad summoned some demons, and Clara said, yeah, well, I'm here to clean your shit up. Ostra says she's going to go help. Clara says no, she'll be safer with her dad, oddly enough. Clara goes to confront the demon, opens the door, gets dragged in by some fiery creature, and then wakes up in a cab. Turns out that was a dream the whole time. Well, actually a memory, but we'll get back to that. Uh, Clara <clears throat> exits the cab and then is called over by some crazy old lady called... Uh, what did I put it down? Uh, it's like Hetty or something. Yeah, Hetty. Clara's called over by Hetty, and Hetty tells her that... Morpheus, who we will start lovingly calling Dr. Emo King. He is Emo King from now on. Uh, Hetty tells her that Emo King is on his way and he wants his sand back. Uh, Hetty is also 280 years old, so that's impressive. She, she does not look good for her age. Or maybe she does, I don't know. Uh, Clara kind of dismisses her, turns around, and then you got Emo King at the top of the steps of a church she's apparently walking into. She doesn't realize that it's Emo King. She... Emo starts telling her that, hey, we have, we need to talk. You have something in mind. She tells him to get in the back of the line. There's other people in front of you and you can't keep God waiting. <sighs> this is probably one of the most long, boring scenes that just infuriated me. I think that's it made me pissed. Uh, Clara is greeted at. Clara goes into the church and is greeted by greeted by Rick the Vic, who is a woman who is also a priest of the Catholic Church. Let's just say that's not how it works. Uh, if you're a girl, you become a nun. You don't become a priest. So, really ticks me off. I'm sorry that Catholic. I know this stuff. You're 
you can't perform a Catholic wedding, you can't do this. What? Well, actually, it's the Church of England, so maybe I'm wrong. No one scratched that. I might be wrong, so if I'm wrong, let me know. In the, you'll let me know in the comments, obviously. I don't. I think I'm right, but I'm probably wrong. Uh, <clears throat> Rick tells her that there's a girl that needs her help, and Clara asks her, who is she? Rick says, uh, does it really matter? I'll double or triple your pay. Clara says, is it a royal? And then goes on about how she doesn't want to deal with royalty and everything like that. Rick tells her that <clears throat> it's the princess. She came in with a football player named Kevin something. The princess wants to get married tonight. Clara tells her, no, we don't want to do it. Then we start hearing the princess in the background, starting to yell and stuff. We're convinced that the princess is possessed by a demon. Clara says, if this goes wrong, I'm going to have a dead princess, a free demon, and nobody to pay my fee. But she decides to do it anyway, telling the telling Rick to take off her top so Clara can put it on. Uh... So then, sorry, I'm getting making sure I'm following my notes properly. Uh, Clara begins t doing the wedding of the two. The princess is really trying to hurry up and is coming off as quite a bitch. Uh, whoever marries her, I feel sorry for that poor, poor soul. Almost like a certain heiress who's running around now with a disgraced prince here in America. It's weird. Uh, but the, the princess is trying to hurry stuff up, but the football player, Kevin, is asking, is this really what you want? Don't you want a nice big royal wedding? Oh, that could be so much better. Uh, the princess says that she just wants to get married right now. She's coming off as a real cunt. Uh, Clara begins the wedding, wed marrying the two, but in reality is doing exorcism and has them start repeating the Latin lines. And as they do it, Kevin starts doing weird stuff, kind of looking like he's hurting. Uh, the princess is starting to get worried, but Clara keeps the exorcist going. And then fingers pop out of Kevin's mouth. Arm, uh, arm then does, and the demon tears apart Kevin and exposes itself. Uh, Clara then tells Rick to take the princess and run. Uh, Clara continues trying to exercise the demon, and let's just say I agreed with the demon. The demon says that she talks too much. Uh, Clara says she'll stop if he gives her his name. He says he has a funny, a funner way of making her stop, which implies like torture and killing, and then emos in the church and says that his name's Agalith. The demon's surprised to see Emo and is all happy and stuff and is saying, man, you look different without your helm. It's almost like I know where it is and starts saying that if Emo lets him ex gives him the princess, he'll tell him who has the, which demon has the, has the crown. Sorry, I'm trying to block off this little light. Which demon has the helm? Uh, Clara continues the exorcism. The demon starts panicking. The demon says, if you don't exercise me, I'll tell you who the helm is. Emo tells her to stop. She doesn't. The demon's all surprised that she disobeyed a direct order from the Endless Dream. Uh, but Clara exercises the demon and gives off a one happy little line, going like, oh, well, yeah, see, walk off, walk your little legs back to fucking hell. Man, I, I hated Clara. Uh, Emo King begins to look even more emo. Uh, Clara says, well, it doesn't really matter because I just tripled my fee. And that's the end of that whole little exorcism plot. We then hop over to Buffalo, New York, where I actually did like this part because I like John D. That's pretty much it. Uh, John and 
Ethel are talking about the ruby. Ethel tells John tells John that email is on his is coming for them, and John says no, he's coming for you because you're the one that stole the ruby. And Ethel says no, you're the one that stole it from me, so he's coming for you. <clears throat> uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Sorry, I'm also burping. Uh, we then learn that Ethel has been moving them around all over the place trying to hide them from Emo and John doesn't really believe her. John thinks that she, in reality he she's been hiding him from her fa from his father and stuff. Ethel says that his dad's dead and John says that he doesn't believe her and he then says his real name. Uh, John Burgess. Uh, Ethel is surprised that he even knows his name and asks John like well, how did you figure it out? John talks about the one good thing about being in prison is you got a lot of time and a lot of time to read. And he pulls out a book called The History of Ritual Magic in England. Extremely convenient name. In it, it talks about a rival to Crowley who was named, who was Magus and his, uh, his mistress who was Ethel. Ethel basically then begins telling John that his dad was a right cunt and this awful human being that wanted her to abort John. And John looks at her in shock like this was the first time you and says this was the first time you've ever told me an honest thing in your life. Uh, John tells her if she, if she wants the ruby, she has to tell him literally everything, all the truth. So, yeah. And from there, we go back to London, to Emo and the annoying Clara. Uh, Clara and Rick are talking about the exorcism and how it went pretty well. Rick notices that Emo looks pretty good, calls him a human, and also Clara's man. Clara says he's not my man and he's not even human, he's an endless. <clears throat> Hetty is then there to happily greeting Emo, and Emo looks happy. Emo. Not really happy, but Emo. Emo asks Clara for the sand. Clara, Clara apparently has lost it and stuff. Emo says that they must find it now, or his world will die, and so do humans. <clears throat> Clara said, basically because nobody will dream anymore and people will just die. Clara says she could do without a, some of her dreams. Uh, about it and Clara then uh, Clara then decides that she'll help him find this, the bag of sand but she'll do it on her on her own being a strong woman that don't need no man and, and constantly interrupting emo and then uh, she notices that there's a raven and then emo notices that there's a raven and is not the happiest camper Emo approaches the raven who is named Matthew and is being, I'm, I'm pretty sure is voiced by, uh, Patton Oswalt. So until I'm told otherwise, Matthew will from now, from now on be called Fat Little Man. Because I don't like Patton Oswalt. I think he's a pathetic person. So, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, Emo says he doesn't need a raven. Fat Little Man says that he was sent by Lucifine and that she said that he would say that he doesn't need a raven. Emo says that he needs to go back now. And then the bird, Fat Little Man, starts saying that, hey, Clara's leaving. You probably do need me, actually. And then, again, Emo tells Matthew to leave. Back to John and Ethel in New York. I really like this part. Uh, Ethel tell, has told John everything and shows shows him her amulet of protection that she got by getting rid of the other two items and is using this to help protect herself, but it won't help protect John. So that's why she needs the ruby, because if she gives the ruby back to Dream, maybe he'll just leave them alone. 
Well, no, she she still wants the ruby. She hasn't told her that she wants to send it, give it back to Dream yet. But uh, that comes up. But uh, John says that the ruby won't work for her because he's altered it to make it only work for him. She says, let's give it back to Dream to protect us. And John says, we have this ruby that makes dreams literally come true. Why don't we just dream of a world where emo doesn't exist? God, I love John D. John D was just, he can play psychotic psychopaths well. And I thought it was amazing. Uh, we go back to Vic. Uh, back to bickering between fat little man and emo. But we did get some interesting information. Apparently, a uh, fat little man died in his sleep and then became a bird and then was sent by Lucifine to help out emo, but emo doesn't want it. Then uh, emo goes in about why he doesn't really want another raven, and it was because he once had Jessamine, and he still feels sad because Jessamine died trying to save him. Then fat little man says, well, we have about six hours to find Clara. She's probably dreaming, so that's how long we have. And then Dream decide, emo decides that she's going to go into his dr her dream. So in... Clara's dream emo says the memory of what happened back at the club. Uh, Clara is trying to exercise that demon that was summoned by Ostra's dad, but it's getting the better of her. Ostra comes to try to save Clara, but instead the demon grabs, grabs, I said grabs, grabs, the, the demon grabs Ostra, starts pulling it into her, into him, it, whatever. Uh, Clara tries to save Ostra, but fails, and Ostra is pulled into, I'm guessing, hell. And Clara is there just holding her arm, looking extremely depressed, and then wakes up from her nightmare to have emo in her. <sighs> they then start talking about the memory and how emo can how it's basically keeping Clara awake, hasn't given her a good night's sleep. And then Emo says that if you find this if you find the sand, I'll take that dream away from you. And then he does a wisecrack about her apartment being just a mess. And she said, Well, if you think this living room's a mess, wait till you see my office. We'll look there first. Oh, they go into her office and they start talking about the past and how Emo was trapped by mages and all this stuff. And then they notice uh, an old picture of a girl and Clara. And Clara then realizes where her sand is. Uh, back to my favorite part. John and Ethel. Man, I love these two. Wish it was just their show. Uh, John and Ethel start reminiscing about the past and how actually it was kind of nice with them and the ruby. Just the two of them. Ethel says, well, it wasn't just the two of us. We had the ruby. And John said, well, you never really let me see it. Only on birthdays when you told me to make a wish and magical things would start happening. And they started reminiscing about how nice it was and then they kind of regret that stealing the ruby and they wish they could give it back john then says well you know what i can make everything better just give me the ruby and ethel says no and then john reassures her that you know what nobody's gonna get hurt those time this time and ethel says they didn't get hurt they got they died and apparently people tried to steal attack uh, John, and John killed them. And he said it was all in self-defense. <clears throat> Ethel and John start having a fight, and then Ethel decides, you know what, to make you believe me, here, here you go, and she starts removing her amulet of protection. <sighs> now we go back to Emo and, Cla Emo and Clara. Basically, she removed the amulet of protection because she wants to give it to 
John because I will protect him and he won't need the ruby then. Remo and Clara. God, I hate these two. So Clara starts taking Emo to an old fr to that lady's house who's named Rachel. And Clara starts talking about how Rachel and her used to be a uh, used to be a thing and they used to, you know, all the time. Apparently, apparently they lived together. Clara got scared and decided to run off. Uh, Clara then tells Emo to wait outside as she goes in to talk to her ex. She, and she goes and does it. She starts talking to her ex and they start reminiscing and they start apologizing and they look like they love each other a whole lot. Clara is a, a, a lesbian. We go back outside to Fat Little Man and Emo start talking about how much they don't really trust humans. You really shouldn't trust humans because humans are bad. Then we go back inside to Clara and her ex are, you know, kissing and are planning to start doing the do. Then Clara's ex starts talking about uh, how much she hurt her when she left and that she called up a bunch of Clara's old exes and Clara's looking shocked and kind of sad and then her ex Rachel starts talking about how you're just selfish you hate everybody and then starts the room starts changing and everything starts getting darker and more dreary and you can see emo in the background come in and then you start noticing that Rachel's kind of changing and she starts becoming a sand person and then it turns out Clara has been in a trance caused by the sand, and Emo had to wake her up. They then turn around and they look into a bedroom where Rachel is basically a corpse lying in a bed, grasping to the sand, being kept alive by the sand, and she looks all hideous and grotesque, and Clara feels awful because she left the sand here and left her, and Emo takes the sand and starts heading out of the room and Clara says, no, you can't leave. You gotta help her. Can't you do anything right? You're just a horrible human person. You would only think about yourself. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> oh, I jumped ahead again. I really just want to get Clara and, Clara and her ex and all this stuff out of the way. Oh wait, no I didn't jump ahead. I'm just want to get this out of the freaking way. So Emo finally decides, you know what? I'll help you out. Tells Clara to go out, wait outside. Clara leaves. Emo looks at the, the corpse of her ex who's still alive. And Emo basically throws some sand at her and lets her die in her sleep peacefully. Giving her one last memory that she loves. And it was her and Clara looking so fondly at each other. Yay! Okay, back to Ethel and John. So John starts panicking as Ethel approaches him with the amulet, saying that he knows what happens when uh, people get on the wrong side of her because that amulet kills people. So uh, <clears throat> he starts panicking and Ethel basically has to reassure her son that she's not trying to kill him, she's trying to give him the amulet to protect him so that he doesn't need the ruby anymore. Uh, and it has kept her alive for 116 years. She actually does kind of look good for her age, not, not gonna lie. Uh, Ethel then gives John the amulet and crying she gives him a final hug nearing the end. I was actually kind of sad at this. Uh, Ethel then starts pulling away from the hug and you can see as the without the amulet she's rapidly aging is dying on the ground. John calls for a guard's help and oh excuse me with Ethel's last words she says I hope you never need that ruby again. Uh, a guard comes in and starts accusing John of killing his mom, and John starts looking at him like, no, I didn't do it. The guard pulls a gun on him, and he starts saying, 
You shouldn't use that on me. Something bad will happen. The guard calls for backup. John starts approaching the guard. The guard shoots him, and John basically kills the guard because of the amulet. John then starts to escape. He meets another two guards. They shoot him, and they both die as well. And they, they don't just like fall to the ground dead. They go in a bloody mess. Beautiful, beautiful. Um. <clears throat> John then leaves the hospital slash prison, and outside, Corinthian's waiting for him. Corinthian then says that John's gonna get cold because all he has are these pajamas on, and Corinthian gives him a jacket, and he said basically says that my job is to make sure that you get to where you want to go, and then leaves John to himself and. Corinthian smiles, so you know Corinthian and John are going to have a heck of a time. I might actually like those scenes, because I like John D, and this was the last of John D for this episode. And we have to finish it off with annoying Clara, emo, and fat little man. So yes, we go back to London, where uh, emo, it's raining now, and Clara's looking off in the rain, all, all sad-like. And, uh, Emo's there with... Emo comes out and looking all Emo and super... smoldery. Says that, uh, she died peacefully in her sleep. And Clara looks out and goes like, you know, we're not all, like, mages. I can't remember his name. God, I miss him. We're not all like him. You know, some of us are good people like her. We're not all evil people like Magus and I. And John, Emo then looks at uh, Clara and says, You're not like Magus at all. Clara then calls over, asks, notices the raven, asks what's his, what's his friend's name. He says it's Matthew, but it's Fat Little Man. And then Clara says, Matthew. Matthew, please look over him. He's going to need it. Fat little man, please look over him. He's going to need it. I just hate them. And then Clara leaves. And then, uh, Emil starts telling Fat Little Man that he needs to return to, uh, the dream world because he's about to go to hell. Fat Little Man says, wait, what? You're going to hell? I, I really should, we should talk to Lucifine yet first to... Uh, she might not like this plan, and then uh, Emo decides, you know what, I might need your help in hell, and decides to take him with him. So, yeah, next episode, they're both going to be in hell. Can we leave a fat little man there, and Emo? Again, the only ups to this, I have to give it a better grade than last time, because last time, there really wasn't much that happened, except we knew where the items were. This time, he at least has an item. But uh, he has a sand. Yay. He has fat little man. Yay. John D. John D is what's carrying the show for me right now. So, uh, I think to uh, round out this episode, I'm going to at least give it a, another 3 out of 10. I just don't like it. And I'm told it's supposed to get a whole lot worse from here. So yay, let's watch this show just kill me slowly. Uh, that's pretty much it for today. Well, tonight. I'll try to get this out tomorrow morning. Hopefully you're watching this in the morning. Hopefully. Gonna try to put it out before work. Gonna try something different. Uh, probably won't be, a, if I'm doing it in the mornings now, there probably won't be a show Thursday. Because Wednesday I'm gonna try to figure out Twitch and all that. We'll see how that goes, and, uh, yeah, I guess from here on out, like, subscribe, share it to your friends, and, uh, don't forget to leave a comment, so, uh, yeah, bye! Hey everyone, thanks for watching, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and share it out with your